I enjoy doing all kinds of sewing. But my favorite thing is making slip covers for furniture. Because it's so creative, you can do so many different things. Hi, I'm Liz Flanagan and I want to share with you some of my secrets. My slip cover secrets. These are shortcuts I've come up with on how to make slipcovers easy. I can complete a slipcover for a sofa in eight hours. And I get between $350 to $450 to do a sofa. You don't have to be an accomplished seamstress to know how to do slipcovers. But you do need to know how to thread a sewing machine, fill the bobbin, and put the zipper foot on. Almost every sofa has a different shape, and I'm going to teach you how to compensate for those shapes. The techniques that I learned from Liz are so practical and easy, anybody can do them. You definitely don't need to be an expert seamstress. I know I sure wasn't when I started. I found them to be very strategic and they tended to consolidate a lot of the things I had read in some of those do-it-yourself books and magazines. I'm a busy homeschooling mom of three with another one on the way and it's very important for me to consolidate and be strategic in what I do with my time. What I do is I school in the morning and then in the afternoons when my younger ones are sleeping is usually when I do my sewing. Sometimes when everybody's asleep at night. The bottom line is that my customers get a much quicker turnaround time and I make great money. But even more importantly than the money, um, I have found my confidence in my sewing capabilities as well as creativity in general to be boosted tremendously and I'm finding I really enjoy what I do. I can complete a slip cover for a sofa in eight hours. And I get between $350 to $450 to do a sofa. I never dreamed I would make $50 an hour sitting at a sewing machine. Now that I have your attention, let's talk about the tools you'll need to do this. First, you will need a yardstick, maybe a tape measure too. You'll need L square to square all your pieces. You'll need some thread snips. This is going to speed up your work. Think about how much time a seamstress spends just cutting the end of your cutting your thread off at the end of every seam. This speeds all that up. My favorite scissors to use are the Fisker Soft Touch Scissors. This just saves you a lot of time and makes it everything a lot easier. I like to use the pens with the glass heads. You'll need a sewing machine. A regular sewing machine is fine. You don't need a big fancy thing. And if it sews, it's fine. The size needle I use on my sewing machine is size 90 slash 14, that is one size larger than what you would normally use. You want to match, and you'll need thread, you want to match the color of the thread to your fabric. For example, on this slip cover, which is white, I used the pure white thread. The cording you would use, or the welt, is size 5 30 seconds. And the size zipper that I use the most is 48 inch. You want your zippers as long as you, they can be 
to make it easy to take the slip cover off and to put it back on because people are going to be washing these. How many yards does it take to make a slip cover? Well, if you look at your slip cover yardage chart and look at the photo, say you're doing a love seat. Look at the photo there of the love seat. How many cushions does it have? Well, if it has two, look on your chart there. How many yards would it take? And you just go down the chart to find the piece of furniture that you're doing. Uh, the ottoman I see is not on this chart. Most ottomans take about two and a half yards. And this would vary according to how you might be matching stripes or, or that sort of thing. You might take that into consideration. This is just a general guide. The way we start is by doing the back, measuring the back. That's the first piece we'll do. If you'll look at the worksheet, the first thing on the worksheet is the back. Then I'm calling this the front. Then you do the arms. Then you join the arms to the back. Then you measure the skirt and you put on the skirt. To measure the back, you could use a, a tape measure, it's the easiest way. You would measure the widest part of the back, and whatever that number is, on your worksheet there, write plus two, because we want one inch, one inch seam allowance on each side. The, no, the width of the back is actually 89. Will we write down 89 on our worksheet? No, we're going to add two to it. One inch seam allowance to each side. So if you have a pencil, go ahead and write that down. Okay, uh, the next thing we need to do for the back is we need to measure the length of the back. At this point, we need to decide if we're going to put a skirt on the back or not. If we're not going to put a skirt on, we don't have to allow for that. If, we're, if we do, the opposite is true. <laughs> but the distance from the floor to the top. And the top of this would be where these two flat surfaces come together, which is not where this seam is. The seam, they move down a bit. It's going to fit better if you'll put your cording up a bit, where the two flat surfaces would come together. That is, when you put one hand here and one hand here, that's where your cording is going to go, which is a bit higher. The number I get is 30. Do we write 30 on our worksheet? No. Always add at least two inches to the length. Okay, we're doing the back first. What do we do next? The front, exactly. Now, we measure the widest point. And the widest point would be this part that wraps around and it goes all the way around we get 70. And we're not going to write down 70. We're going to write down 72 on our worksheet. That's the width. The length on this piece would, would include what is sometimes called the decking. I'm calling it the, do I say, I said front, I might have said front and decking on the worksheet. Okay, y'all got front and decking. This, so we'd measure here middle of the back, all the way down. Give yourself some room to tuck in the, the back there and then some to hang down over the edge. The skirt is going to be attached. Normally we would attach the skirt right where these two, right here at the edge of this. This particular one is done differently but when you're doing a tuxedo skirt that's normally where you would do it. 
Let's me let me talk to you about how to measure the arm. The width of the arm would be from the very back to the very front, which in this case is 38. We don't write down 38. We add 2, which would be 40. The length is from the inside all the way down to the outside to where the skirt would begin. And again, we're going to add at least two. We got 41, so we add two, which would be 43. Um, then we want to add uh, where it says skirt. That means the length of the skirt, which would be from the floor to this point right here. Where, the, where this comes together. Um, now, we can write that number down. We're going to add, some, add, you know, maybe four inches to that just to give us ham and all if we need to do that. This is what I call a drape and shape technique. You're going to be using this several times in, in doing any slip cover. Anything that has a curve, basically. You just put the fabric onto whatever you're trying to reproduce here. And if you can just think in terms of if you put one hand on one flat surface, the other hand on the other flat surface, where they come together is where you want to put your pen. And this has been done for us actually on this, but it's not on this arm. It's usually pretty clear. So I'm going to put the pen right there. If you have like a curve on the back of a camelback sofa, you would drape the fabric over the back and you would reproduce that curve just like I'm reproducing this curve on the arm. We're going to have a row of pins all the way around. Where the pin goes in and comes out is where you're going to be sewing the cording on. On slip covers, it's very important to have everything fit loose enough. In other words, when you go to the sewing machine, you're going to have a tendency to kind of move this cord in. That's just the way we are. Every student I've ever had does that. I find catch myself doing that. We don't want to do that. If I had a choice, I might move it out a little bit, but don't move it in because it won't fit if you try that. Okay, we've got this row of pins all the way around. Now this, normally what I do is come I put the pin, a row of pins that would start at the point that is on the most outermost part and come straight down like this instead of reproducing this curve here. It's just going to fit better if you do, do that and it's just going to look better. If you choose to do it the other way, still going to be billowy on the arm to some extent. There's really no advantage to having it come in. And you can see on these two slip covers I've made how it looks. See the arms on these I've made? Okay. Okay, straight line, imaginary line from this pin to that pin. I'm just going to put another pin in here. Okay, now I can take it off. And cut one half inch. We're going to guesstimate here. One half inch from the pin yeah. all the way around. Now we can take the pins out.
and we have what you might call a pattern. This is the arm front here. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine and sew the cording on. We're going to be attaching the cording to the arm front and we're going to do this on one step. If your cord is 5 30 seconds, your bias cuts or the diagonal cuts that you make will be two inches wide. That gives you one half inch seam allowance and you can just match up the edge of the, of the strip to the edge of the um, fabric. And you can use on this uh, a real long stitch. We're basically just basting this on there. We want to sew pretty close to that cord when we attach the arm itself to the arm front. We're going to sew even closer. And when you get to a curve, make it go around, you'll clip this. And what do you do when you make a mistake? Well, I've sewn up the cord. You take the whole thing out. <laughs> How long did that take? So we're not going to get upset about mistakes, are we? Let's start over on that. Wrapping the bias strip around the cording. We have our zipper foot on our sewing machine. Leave this little tail right here. We have a long stitch because basically this is just basting the cording onto the arm front. From time to time you'll want to move that cord over. If you feel like it's slipping out, because you don't want to sew up the cord, of course. Now, if they gave speeding tickets for sewing too fast, I'd be in jail. Because <laughs> once I get going, I like to really go. I like fast sewing machines. The button that says uh, there's a button on my machine here that says so slow. I've never pushed that button. I don't know what it does. I don't want to sew slow. I want to sew fast. Again, being careful not to pull on this or have any tension on your cording. Because after I got it sewed on there and that cord came out, you might hear a wordy dirt. <laughs> you find the middle of the top of this and you match it up with the middle of the top you fold up the arm piece and you find the middle match that up with um, the top of your arm front. You could put a pin there if you wanted to. You don't have to. And then you uh, match it up with the middle and then you just walk it around. Until you get to there. And then you match up the edges. 
Again, we have a one half inch seam allowance here. Now we're going to shorten our stitch a bit because this is a this has got a hold. I use uh, a stitch that's one size longer than you would normally use on your, your machine. Your sewing machine is probably, if it's a computerized machine, it's set up for 2.5. Uh, I've got it on 3.0, which is one step higher. And we're going to sew all the before we sewed close to the cord, this time we're sewing even closer. We don't want that little thread to show through where we basted the cording onto the onto. Now we're going to put this on the sofa and see how it fits. This customer wanted a shabby chic look so we're trying to keep everything soft. If you want to make it tighter, you can. For the most part, people do want things to loosely fit though, on slip covers. But not too loose. We still, they still want a custom job. This is a wonderful fabric I'm working with today. It's called Duck. And it's the perfect weight for slip covers. It's not too heavy and it's not too light. Okay. The other arm is finished, but what we need, when we took those measurements, the length and the width on our worksheet, we cut squares that size. And if you have a serger, you could serge those seams, which I have already done. I've cut those squares before I started. And I put the cording on the and where I was going to join the front to the back, I put, I sewed the cording on one side, then I joined the front to the back. So we've got the front, and we've got the back on, and we smooth it out. The way you decide where the cord is going to be, remember, is you put your hands on one flat surface and on another flat surface and where they come together is where the cord is. If it's a curve, uh, you do it the same way. Now we're going to join the arm to the back. I've lost a lot of sleep figuring out how to do this, so you're going to benefit from the loss of sleep. You put your, we're, the seam is going to be right here on this curve. You put your fingers, the end of your fingers, right there. And you're going to cut in to about one half inch of where the seam would be. Just keep doing that until this is very smooth on here. Then, you do the same thing for the other piece. See how this is pulling here? It's not lying flat like you want it to. So you clip it. Put your hand, you're not going to cut your hand. Stop about one half inch and make little cuts all the way down until it lays smooth. Instead of cutting deeper, cut in between the cuts. That's what's going to make it last move on the sofa. Then you flip the other one down like 
so until it lays together just like that. Then you put a roll of pins. You pin this very gingerly, meaning you try not to catch the sofa. You just put a roll of pins, and you don't have to pin every inch. If you pin every three inches, that's plenty enough. Sometimes I only put two or three pins in a whole long seam. And then, after you get a roll of pins on there, pins all the way down. You're going to take this off, put it on the sewing machine, and sew right on that fold. We don't have to clip the, this, at this on the decking very much usually. We're just on the decking, actually, this is such a straight seam. If you wanted to, you could pin the back and the middle. And the front. After you have pinned it, you sew right at the edge of the fold here. That's what makes it look professional. If you move it over too much, it's going to look like you just tacked it together. And then you'll sew all the way down and then attach it to the decking. All in one seam. The next thing we'll do is mark where the skirt is going to go. If you're doing a tuxedo pleat or a box pleat on the corner. As I said, we would attach it right at this curve. And this will determine the length of your skirt. And uh, that looks like about 12 and a fourth at that point. The sofa's worn. At this one. No, this, this is okay. This is 12 and a fourth. Keep it 12 and a fourth. We're going to put a row of pins all the way around the sofa where the skirt is going to go. This will tell us exactly where the skirt is going to be attached. <clears throat> if this is uh, 12 and a fourth, you would probably make the skirt of the sofa 12, unless you want it to drape on the floor. When people say that it touches the floor, that really means a quarter of an inch off the floor. What you're seeing here is a box pleated skirt. This is sometimes called a tuxedo pleat. You cut the skirt, the length of the skirt, plus three inches. Two inches for the hem, and one inch is for the seam at the top. Measure the sofa to see how wide the skirt piece will be. Add five inches to this number. Since two and a half plus two and a half is five, that's why we add five inches. Because we're going to be, the pleat is going to be two and a half inches. The center of the pleat is a separate piece. It's eight to ten inches wide. With a pencil on the wrong side of the fabric, mark the length of the skirt. Line up this line with the cording on the slipcover and sew the skirt onto the slipcover. Let's talk about how we go about covering the cushions. If the cushion is rectangular, uh, we're going to measure the width of the cushion and the length of the cushion. Add one inch. That is, we're going to have one half inch seam allowance on each side. If you have an L-shaped cushion, which is one that would have an extension maybe on one side, you would, ha or if you have a cushion that has an extension here and a little extension on this side, you'll have to make a pattern. And the way you do that is you use the paper that the fabric came wrapped in, uh, the brown paper, and you put it underneath the cushion and you just draw, you put it at the very edge of, of, the, of the cushion and then uh, 
after you have drawn that pattern, uh, you want to straighten out your lines. Sometimes the cushion is squiggly and it's worn on one side. You don't want your slip cover to be sagging down on one side, even if, this, even if the cushion is. So, you just take a yardstick and you straighten out those lines. In the same way that this cushion is not exactly square that I did, but I squared it with my L square. These lines are all perfectly square. It's going to fit better and look better if you make it square as opposed to going up and down <laughs> as it might be having been used. Um, the next thing you do after you, uh, put the, you put the cording on the top and the bottom, now you're ready to cut the bands that go around here. We're going to cut these. This is a six inch depth on this cushion. So we're going to cut the band seven inches. That's one extra inch, meaning half inch seam allowance here, half inch seam allowance here. We're going to cut three of those bands. One is for the front of the cushion. Not going to have any seams in the front. And the other two are for putting the zipper in for the back. We're going to put the zipper in and then put the front piece on top of that and then we'll just trim it so that it will be seven inches. Don't try to do all the math to figure out how much you're going to use to put the zipper in. We're just going to put it in and go. This is just a real easy way to do it. I like zippers that are covered like this as opposed to zippers that you will find on most upholstered things and some slip covers where the teeth are exposed. If the teeth are exposed, they're going to cause more wear and tear on the slip cover as you sit on it and get up. It's just, it's just not a good idea to do that. Let's talk about how to put the zipper in the band that goes around the cushion. First, you put the zipper front side down not on the edge, but near the edge of your band. Try to sew right in the middle of your zipper tape. That's going to make it strong. Then you flip the zipper over. This is a brown zipper. You wouldn't use a brown zipper with a white slip cover. The slip covers normally come in kind of an off-white and that's the color that I use. I'm just using a brown zipper to contrast how, we, how I do this. And putting a zipper in, basically what you're doing, you're attaching the zipper to one of the bands, then you attach it to the other band. Before we attack, ready to attach this to the other side of the zipper, we need to fold this over an inch and a fourth to an inch and a half and uh, top stitch it. You don't have to worry about keeping this folded straight because when you trim it, it's all going to come out. Look underneath there to make sure you're not exposing the zipper. Again, sewing right in the middle of your zipper tape. Keep checking. Look under there and make sure it's all lined up. You don't want that zipper, the teeth of the zipper peeking out. Now, in this whole sewing class, you have not seen me backstitch at all. Because I don't backstitch that many things. But on this zipper at the end here, Not only do I backstitch, I backstitch several times. This is a point of stress, especially if you're using a zipper that might be short, which of course I use long zippers, but even at that, you can still catch it. Just at the end of where the teeth are is where you start your stitching. And you go back and forth, back and forth.
You don't want to put the slip cover onto the cushion and have the whole thing rip apart. So we backstitch, backstitch right here. Now we've got this piece. This piece is the width of your band. You lay that on top of the zipper. Center the zipper. And then you trim it the same width as your band. Then you're ready to ready to make your seam allowance at least an inch. You're ready to join the zipper to the band that's going to go around the front. When you attach this band to your top piece or bottom, whichever one you want to call it, you will find the center of the zipper and line that up with the center of the back of the cushion. So all the way around and then of course match up the center front you find the center front, match that up with the center front of the top or the bottom, whichever one you were doing first. I want to show you a technique and how to start and stop putting the cording onto the cushion. To start, you, sew, you you cover the you sew close to the cord, just the cord, you're not attaching it to the cushion at all. Then, say this is the cushion. You leave a little tail, a little part just hanging up here like this. Then, you again a seam allowance is one half inch. Then when you get to the corner of the slip cover, you're going to have to trim it like so to make it fit. Don't try to make these corners square. You want to round off the corner. You're going all the way around. Same that you've gone all the way around. Here we come. We're coming down the home stretch here. Still one half inch from the edge. Okay, we've sewn our cording all the way around. Okay, now we're where we started. What's a girl to do? Well, we can do is I'm going to trim this so I can see this cord really well. See that cord down in there? We're going to butt the cord together. So we're going to trim the, the cord so that it's going to butt together like so. And on this piece, we're going to cut it, leave about an inch there. Fold it down like so. Lay this in here, and this is how it looks. That's a tried and true way of doing it. Uh, if you go home and look at your sofa, you will see something. Where you'll see where they started and stopped, and they probably did it just like that. Sometimes your bias piece might not be quite long enough. This saves a lot of time when you cut your bias pieces. This is the way you would do it. Cut all your biases, put all the ends together, and choose one. If I were trying to do, say, the back of the sofa where it's a very, I need a long piece of cord, which one of these would I use? I'd use the longest one. In fact, I'd probably get the two longest ones out. Now, if I get to two longest ones and they're not quite long enough and I need maybe 10 inches more, I'm not going to cut off one of these long ones. 
I've got a shorter one here I can use to piece it. This is my this saves a lot of time when you cut your bias pieces or your diagonal cuts as some people say. And if you're going to piece it, this is the way you would do it. You'd put the edges together. These, of course these edges have been cut on the on the straight. Put the edges together like this and sew them together. Trimming these seams really close at the end, meaning get rid of all extra thread. It's real important to do that on this particular thing so that you have a longer bias strip to use if you need it for. You'd only do this maybe on uh, the back. You'd probably never do this on an arm. You might do it one time on the skirt. But this is the way it's pieced. If you need to piece a bias strip to go over the cord. Stitch in the ditch is when you have the needle of the sewing machine going right into uh, the right next to the cording. The first step would be to sew your cording on. You'd sew this along the line of where your seam's going to be. And for this you'd use a medium to short stitch to make it really look good. You wouldn't use a long stitch on this. The, after you've sewn that on, the piece that you're going to be joining this to um, you just lay it over it. Wherever your seam is going to be, you will have marked where this is going to be or have it pinned probably. Probably pin it together. Let's pretend you this has been pinned together on the sofa. Just like you want it to fit. And you're going to keep your pins in this position and we don't ever sew over pins, do we? No one in this class would ever sew over pins. So just before you get to the pin, you take it out. And the needle, again, is going to go right in this fold. When you get to the pin, take it out. And you're stitching. Stitch in the ditch is a technique that is used anytime you want to uh, join like a curve to a straight seam, say the center of the back. You, could, you would put a row of pins where the curve would be, so you're cording on the curve, and then lay it together and pin it. And so I, see, you see this doesn't show unless you put, stretch it apart, you can see a seam in there, but you don't do, you generally do that on a slip cover, but it just looks like there's no seam there at all. And that's called stitch in the ditch. Is there a need for more people to make slipcovers? Well, when you consider less than 2% of the population sews, and that's a statistic from 10 years ago, probably even fewer people sew now. Yes, try this. When you're with a group of people and someone in the group turns to you and says, Hi Susan, what are you up to? Say this. I've watched this video and I'm now making slipcovers for furniture. Several people in the group will say this line, I've been looking for someone. Just part of those people will buy the fabric, bring it to you and say, now do it. But that's enough. Now, how do you get your clients? Ask yourself, who is asked this question? Do you know anybody who makes slipcovers? Well, the fabric store is asked that question. Upholsters are asked that question. The upholsters really don't like to make slipcovers and they're real eager to give your card out. Seamstress, as a rule, don't like to make slipcovers. I don't know why, but they don't. And they're real anxious to give your card out too. Drapery workrooms, um, 
your friends, your relatives. You could make uh, a notice and put it on a bulletin board at your bu at a business. You could advertise in your neighborhood newspaper. You could make flyers, put them in people's mailboxes. And you probably have some more good ideas on how to market yourself. I hope making slipcovers is a huge success for you.